bring you into their world It's not just chickens and the Angus herd So take off your boots, relax, and go beyond the ranch Hi guys, and welcome back to Beyond the Ranch, if by some weird chance this is your first time here. My name is Mike. I'm Erin. And uh, Beyond the Ranch is all about uh, taking a look at what happens that you guys don't actually see during the Our Lime of Life videos. Right now we're putting out three videos uh, per week, or at least trying to. Sometimes we miss that. Erin's doing TikToks every single day, but sh sometimes she misses one of those. But uh, here on the Beyond the Ranch channel is a chance for you guys to ask us questions and also us to get a chance to talk about uh, some things that may not ever make it to the channel. And there could be a number of different reasons why things don't ever get made into a video. Sometimes they're just little tiny things that really would take 10 seconds to explain. And uh, trying to make a whole video out of them would be a a little bit of a, a waste of time, but uh, we, we definitely like that you guys are, are able to join us. And of course, uh, the numbers on the Beyond the Ranch channel growing. We're up over 12,000 subscribers on this channel alone. So thank you very much guys for being here this evening. Um, the title of today, tonight's video is, uh, is fake news. And uh, that's because the thumbnail of this video is actually fake news. Uh, it was uh, a picture of me holding Tallow, who's our newest goat. And it said, meet Tallow. We're not going to bring him up here to the live stream studio, and Aaron could explain why Tallow's not coming up here. Uh, yeah, Tallow, uh, if you watch my TikTok, you'd know. Uh, <laughs> Tallow was raised with his mom. He wasn't a bottle baby. Um, he's eight months old. Uh, yeah, he's just not, like, we're working on getting him more friendly, but he's not, he's not like the other goats that would like to crawl inside your skin. Um, <laughs> that sounds horrible. Like Hannibal Lecter <laughs> goats? Is that what we've got? <laughs> <laughs> they want to wear our skin. Tell me I'm wrong. Though. It puts the lotion in the basket. But tell me I'm wrong. I've never had a goat say that to me. Well, but they act like <laughs> they can't get close enough. They can't. Uh, so, yeah, he's just not as friendly. And um, he's actually, I think he's doing better. He did. He was out with the goats today. He Correct, probably... yeah. So if you guys watch the webcams, which you can see on our website, um, one of the webcams is the outside view of the goat pen. And uh, yeah, I took him over there today. In fact, uh, that's how we're going to introduce you, you guys to him and, and a little bit more about Tallow. Um, I do have a video that I'm going to show you guys during tonight's episode that is uh, when we took Tallow out and dropped him off and let him kind of get used to the other goats. Yeah, so. we, uh, we put him in quarantine for a few days just to make sure he was good. He's good. He has had his vaccinations and everything. Our goats actually need their vaccinations. So Pepper's done. Yeah. Nobody's sick or anything, but it's always good when you bring a new animal home that you put him in quarantine for a few days. So, uh, yeah, he went out with the ghost today. Uh, hopefully he'll make some goat babies. That's why we got him. Yeah, exactly. Uh, Jeff Lee with our first question of the night, since we're talking about tallow, who came up with the name tallow? Um, I did. <laughs> I made beef tallow this week. We uh, carry. What exactly is tallow in case somebody doesn't well, know? Well, it's rendered fat. So like um, you can use it for cooking or soap, but it's you take fat and you cook it low and slow and you get the oil out of it. Um, so we made tallow, was that Thursday? Friday, I don't know, Wednesday, something like that. Uh, <laughs> and uh, we had come up with a few names and nobody liked any of them. Nobody could agree on any of the names. And we had a name change in the middle of the night when I couldn't sleep. I was like, nope, I don't like that name. <laughs> so so, it, so he's, he's obviously a white goat. He's a silky white miniature fainting fainting goat. Yes. And we wanted to do something that was along the lines of like the white, because he's the only white goat that we have, right? Well, Jack and Waffle. Yeah, have but I mean, white. yeah, but he's they, all they white. have some, but he's all white. So like we were trying to come up with like, you know, Eminem. You know, white wrapper. Um, we <laughs> had vanilla ice for a little while, white wrapper. Yeah. Uh, I, I came up with mayo, which I thought was pretty good, but that might have been just too much on the nose. Grace didn't like mayo. No, she wanted, what was it, uh, snow, was it snowball? Frosty. Yeah. Frosty she liked. She liked Lincoln Frosty. Lincoln wanted snowball, which we've had bottle calves before YouTube. We've had two bottle calves named snowball because we couldn't come up with original names. Uh, <laughs> so, yeah, tallow. Because and tallow, when you render fat, it's white it's as white well. It's white when yeah. it's when it solidifies. So, yeah. and uh, I don't have any goat tallow, but uh, <laughs> I looked it up because we would it was need like, to sacrifice a goat for that. Well, it was like, is it called something different? Is goat fat that's been rendered called something different? Because if it's with pork, it's lard. Uh, but no, it's it's goat tallow also. So interesting. Yeah. 
Tallow is tallow. No matter mm, but it's you, not lard. But it's not lard. What's the difference between lard and tallow? Species. Pigs make lard. Yeah. Beef doesn't make lard. Beef makes tallow. And goats make tallow. Yeah. What does a giraffe make? I don't know. <laughs> I'm not even probably not much fat on a giraffe. Know. Who knows? Well, I'm sure there's some fat. <laughs> not much. Uh, I think it's a good name. I like it. Yeah, it's a good name. He seems to like it. He doesn't care. Yeah. Um, I did go over, and if you do check the webcam now, the goats are not out um, because we put the goats inside. And he did come in, and he came in, and he kind of, you know how the goats come up to that the, the wall in there and kind of jump up and yeah. want to say hi? He acted like he almost wanted to. Like he came over and was like, oh, I kind of, no, I can't do that. I, I can't actually, be like all the other goats. I think... So, like, you could catch him and, like, pick him up, and he would, like, let you pet him and kiss him and stuff. But then, like, if you set him down, he would, like, back himself in a corner, and sometimes he would, like, shiver. And uh, he wasn't, I don't know, he was just, like, skittish. But the other ones are so obnoxious that I'm sure he's going to be like, oh, maybe these guys are okay. <laughs> maybe these guys, they're, like, way over the top, the rest. Yeah. If, you, if you've ever been to the farm store, if you went to the petting zoo, uh, yeah, the goats are just overly friendly. So he'll, he might pick up on some of that. I hope. I, I mean, I just, I don't want to, he doesn't have to be as obnoxious as they are, but, and like Pepper's not. He's, I mean, he's friendly enough. He'll come up to you, he'll say hi, yeah. you know, that uh, kind of thing. But, yeah, they don't need to, like, it's a bit much when the four of them are <laughs> like, like I made a TikTok the other day trying to like feed them all some carrots and stuff. It's just, it's just chaos. Well, Saturday's video, I had to go get a picture for the thumbnail and I was trying to get a picture of just Pepper. It's hard to do when you've yeah. got five goats in there now that are all trying to sit on top of you and why what are we taking pictures of let me kind of be in the picture so it took a little bit of work just to get a picture of just pepper too yeah. so uh laura asked uh, speaking of pepper why don't you want pepper babies because well the big reason is pepper's mom is in there so we really don't want him breeding back with his mom that's the that's the biggest yeah thing. all he could breed would be fancy and um yeah we just need it <laughs> i would like i would not like to have separate dads yeah so exactly um yeah, we'll uh, we'll keep tallow for now, and I think I don't know what we'll do. Like obviously, if he has daughters, like that makes things more difficult. But uh, you know, one round at a time. So yeah, we'll, we'll see how it goes. Hopefully, Fancy will get pregnant. She obviously wasn't. She should have had kids by now, and she's not getting any wider. No, she's just eating. Yeah. More. So, so I'm surprised that uh, she did not get bred because Pip was in forever. Forever. Yeah. But she's young, so. Uh, no goats are pregnant right now. Cruella had Pepper, so Cruella did get pregnant. Fancy was not. Well, there's really no way. Well, I guess she, there probably is a way to preg check a goat, but we didn't do it. And, mm -hmm. you know, they put on their their winter weight. So Fancy looks pregnant. Yeah. She's just not doing anything. So, like, Fancy and Cruella, like, they're both young, right? So they'll be two this spring. And so, like, they were old enough to breed, but, like, they were both getting fat. And then Cruella just got a lot fatter, and Fancy kind of just kind of stayed the same. So. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah, I'm surprised she didn't get pregnant, but I don't know. We'll see if she gets pregnant this time. Uh, keep an eye out for Hefner Farms if they do show up here this evening. Um, I'm actually wearing one of their shirts. They were nice enough to send me a family farm shirt. I don't know where they're from because it was like months ago they sent me the shirt and I finally found it. It was in my pickup. Found it in my pickup. Uh, but I <laughs> decided to wear it and uh, they sent me a nice little shirt to, to wear. So hopefully if they show up, uh, everybody point out that uh, I am wearing their shirt. So uh ethel's still pregnant still waiting on her she's still within her her uh delivery window i guess i should say yeah, and yeah. she looks pregnant yeah and even the we uh, this actually covers another question somebody asked about a hoof trimmer uh we have a farrier that comes out uh once every two months and we line up horses and not for cows though like we no don't... cows but uh for horses and donkeys and that kind of thing and he was here a few weeks ago, a couple weeks ago, and he said, wow, Ethel looks a lot lower than what she was before. So uh, we see her every single day, so it's kind of hard to tell, you know, what's happening with her. I don't, but, I don't go see her. It's been a few days since I've been back there to see her. You would probably notice then. I think she's lower, but like, I don't know. She doesn't have a bag at all, and she should bag up. Last I checked, she didn't have a bag at all. Yeah. 
She will. Did you check her today? I did not check her today, no. She might be starting to get a little bit of a bag, but it's kind of hard to tell. Oh, so. I'll have to go feel her up tomorrow. <laughs> Gene asked if number four stayed in the past year. Nope, this morning he actually was out. Um, got him back in, no big deal. Fixed some fence. Uh, he, he, whether he was walking over the fence where that snow drift was, um, he decided that he could just jump it and we'll see if he, if he stays in now. I actually tied that fence up a little bit, a little bit taller. So hopefully it'll, it'll keep him in, but we shall see. And Roger asked if there are 30, 30, 30 and 30 shirts this year. We're just 10 days away from the beginning of the 30 and 30. Uh, we do have some 30 and 30 shirts lined up. I did, I don't remember last year, and I was going to ask you about this. Did we put out, we had special shirts for the 24 hour live stream too. Did we put those out right away? Or did we wait a couple weeks before? I don't remember, How would honestly. I, know that? <laughs> I, 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 know, I thought maybe you might remember. I don't think we had the live stream shirts right away. I don't know. We should, if we were organized, we would have everything all at once. So you we guys would. could order them. So then you could wear your 24 hour live stream shirts during the live stream. Right. We're going to try and get that done. <laughs> we will try. JB Weld, thank you for the $20 thank super you. chat. Appreciate it. I had to use some JB Weld today. It made me think of you. Uh, <laughs> wait, what, what were you JB Welding? I don't even remember. Oh, it was. Uh, Piece, a corner piece on the uh, um, the project that I have going on in the barn. Number four is not going to be veal. He might go processing early, but yeah, he's uh, we weighed him uh, when we weighed last time. He weighed almost 700 pounds. So even if he went into the feedlot now, he would be a little small. He might be able to go in the next round just because he's a stinker. But we'll see. We'll see how he does. So. Uh, is the fake news because the two of you are in shirts or is the weather really that warm? It is nice. It's fake. I mean, we it call it like, fake spring. It was like 40. But it was nice. Three. No no wind, sunshine, 41 degrees, I think, 35 right now. But uh, yeah, it was kind of a fake spring. Yeah, it was a great day. It was really We have nice. snow coming tomorrow, correct? Tuesday. Tuesday. Yeah. So The house got hot actually today. Like when I came in from being outside, I was like, oh, it's like warm in here. The sunshine does that, yeah, right? Yeah. yeah. And the kids played in the mud all day. <laughs> they did. They played all day. Yeah. We had a tall hover that would jump any fence, even at four foot. She stopped when she got pregnant. Yeah, it's like once they figure it out, until they get just like a little bit older, it's like they're young and spry, and they they can just be tricky. So. There's a there's a video that's I don't know how long ago, two three years back, and uh, somebody probably remembers watching it. But I was moving cows down a fence line. And there was some heifers in there, and we were going down this this you know just a barbed wire fence, and all of a sudden one of them stops, turns, and just boink right over like a deer, just right right over the fence. I was amazed they that I got it on video. Fen like they really you know fences are just suggestions. Like that's really true. Like a cow can go through a fence if they want yeah, to, or over if they really yeah. want to. And if they don't make it over, they'll they'll get over because they'll get they'll tear down the fence. Yeah as they go. So uh, 51, Steve is still not doing anything. She's, uh, <laughs> so one of the things we talked, I didn't, I didn't mention in the video, we talked about uh, the 16th was the day that we were expecting, you know, like one of the cows, one of the heifer calves was due. Uh, that was the date that was given to us by the vet when we, when we preg checked. So I actually went back and checked today. If you go by the math of when we put the bull in today would technically be the first day that if they went exactly to term that they would have a calf so no calves today either so we're still waiting if you have your guess in on on the first calf uh everybody's still in the running it could be could be anybody out there um jared is my f my code name because it's really with two r's oh, sure. instead of instead of one uh -huh. so it's a very sneaky code name uh, -huh. uh could you theor theoretically put the bulls back in with the cows after separating out the empties i'm thinking inducing labor um, and not having to feed them separately. Yeah, I mean, like, we could. We've always obviously just, like, bred once a year, but obviously, like, our operation has changed, but, like, still, it's partly, like, grass management and, like, not having calves, like, having calves, although the weather's, like, crappy now, like, as soon as it warms up and stuff, like, they start putting weight on. Um, if we have calves in the fall and then it gets super cold, like, they're not going to gain over the winter and they're just going to bring mom down and she's never going to cycle with the rest of the herd. And it's okay to have empties because we get jerky and we get feedlot heifers and that's okay too. Yeah. So. Yeah. I mean, when, once you start, um, you know, if you just start breeding all willy nilly and just, you know, just it's letting them have like calves, never... I mean, it would just be a nightmare. And in theory we could, right? So we could have a spring calving and we could have like a... A fall calving or if we leave the bulls in for you know if we only leave the bulls in for 90 days 
but then you have to wait 30 days to preg check so it's 120 days from july and like i mean so then when we cap august <laughs> september i don't know I do math uh something like that we like late summer early fall but yeah then it's gonna turn cold and like we have snow in September, so we could be calving in the snow, just the same as calving in the snow in April. Yeah, yeah. I mean, really, everybody, you know, as people say, well, can't you push, um, even now, like push calving into June and July and that kind of stuff, which technically we could. Um, you're really trying to time calving out for for grass growth. Um, also, you know, there is a big thing, you know, disease and all that kind of stuff. And if the ground is wet, then, you know, there's issues there. We also have haying that we need to get done. So we really try, um, we've got haying on the summer pasture. So we have to get that done before we can move cows on the summer pasture. There's just a lot of little tiny things that come into play there. Jared means only we put the bulls back in and while the whole herd is already pregnant. Yeah, I mean, so I get what you're saying. So like, just run your bulls with your cows once you separate off your empties. Yeah. Yeah, but we got horses to feed. And like some of the supplements that we feed the cows, the horses can't have. So like we just got like we don't have enough fence because we don't have because our whole operations changed. Right. And so like we just don't it's the bulls are not really the problem because they can be with the horses and they can't like the horses can't be with the cows. They could technically. I mean, we could put horses in with cows. We had horses in with the steers. Yeah, but like some like when we do like the magnesium lick and stuff, they can't that have that, a problem, yeah. and they can't. The horses can't be with the calves when the calves are getting creep. That's a problem. That's a problem. And then there's other supplements and stuff too. Like horses are just picky, and so yeah, there's just certain feeding restrictions. They can have a salt block. <laughs> yeah. They're just horses are picky, picky animals. Yeah. Uh, I saw Extreme uh, Acceleration asked earlier about coming to the farm store. Um, Everything's in stock in the farm store, right? No, we're out of steaks. Oh, okay. But we are having more coming back here soon. Yeah, um, I have to do cut sheets actually tonight, so um, I didn't get that done yet. Uh, yeah, we're we should have meat back at the end of the week. I'm hoping. Okay. Ish. It's, so we need it... to make room in the freezers. So <laughs> I need you guys to do me a favor, even if just one person does it, even nobody does it. But uh, we we if you're if you're thinking about placing an order for beef and pork, and if you have room in your freezer to take some of out out of our freezer, please do. Uh, we need to make room for six steers, five steers. Five. Five steers, yeah. and one of them, no, not one of them is your mom's this time, is it? No. Nope. So all five of them are coming back into our freezers, which are stock full of pork right now, actually. So we're not in horrible. Sh I, I don't know. It's uh, <laughs> we'll see how much we ship tomorrow. So, uh, yeah, we uh, we have some we have some orders going out tomorrow, so that will help. And we've we've shipped a lot. Like, yeah. We I know. I, mean, you guys I know helped. we can at least probably put like three steers in. The other two are going to be a bit tight. So. <laughs> <laughs> um, Emily asked, uh, I'm completely new to buying meat online. What do you recommend I try first? Well, what's your favorite kind of meat? So there's two different ways to order beef and pork from our website. We have packages that are pre-built by Erin um, specifically for a purpose, right? So she's got the grilling package or the slow cooker package or the pork package or whatever else. Um, and you can also buy a la carte and, and build your own package. Yeah. So it really just kind of depends on, on what you like to eat, uh, how big your family is, um, all that kind of stuff. Shipping um, is a little ridiculous, but we just, we don't jack up shipping at all just keep in mind that that there, you know there is shipping costs on there yeah. we always tell people that when you build your own package you can go anywhere between eight and twelve pounds um, and that's what our that's what our box range is but if you push it to 12 correct me if i'm wrong you're actually being more efficient that way when it comes to shipping because yeah. shipping eight pounds costs the same as shipping 12 pounds yeah right okay yeah yeah if you yeah put put 12 pounds in you're gonna you're gonna get a better deal in shipping and same thing if you order a package there's an option so packages are around 10 pounds the pre-built packages the bundles um and then there's an option to add two more pounds and so you can get like two pounds of ground beef or you can get some dog bones um i think i don't know what else is on there i have to look um but you're not going to get charged extra shipping for throwing in those extra two pounds. Yeah, so the whether way it's bratwurst or liver. Or yeah, else, so yeah. the way that we build our packages, like, we have to shoot for, like, shipping has to be done based on that range and stuff. So, yeah, like, put your 12 pounds in. Um, 
get the most out of that shipping cost because it is ridiculously expensive. That's what our cost is. Unfortunately, it's not free for us. Um, we get it's a lot cheaper than what it could be. Yeah. Yeah, we managed to make some deals, wheel and deal a little bit with the shipping. Yeah. But because, um, yeah, I think originally when we started looking at shipping, like a 12 pound package to New York, for example, was like a hundred bucks yeah. and we managed to get them down to like 60 for shipping. I know it's still a lot, but um, it gets it to you in two days. Uh, and it has to go two day. It can't go ground, obviously. Like it's a perishable product. And we did actually have somebody that didn't want two day shipping and stuff, which is fine. Like, it, but I can't, we can't. Yeah. At least, you want whatever you want. We, can't we don't want do somebody that. to get rotten meat either. No. You know, that would be horrible. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Hutchpack five, do you have St. Louis style pork steaks? First, you have to explain. I don't so, know what that is. No. It amazes me how many different cuts there are that have different names that are the same thing across, you know, like, I don't know what a St. Louis style pork steak is. I, now I'll look it up. It's probably from a shoulder. It could be a certain pork chop, could be. Yeah, we don't have that. Yeah. We have pork chops. <laughs> you know, we get like, uh, can I get a porterhouse? Well, we do have porterhouse steaks. But we don't separate them out. But we don't separate them out. So if you get, if you order a T-bone and you get a porterhouse, boop, bonus. Um, if you don't, you know, that's what it is, what it is. Uh, dog bones. Um, <laughs> they're beef bones. They're beef bones. Yeah, they're not dogs. <laughs> It'll be weird. <laughs> Our puppy mill out back. Yeah. We call, if you, your dog can eat them. You can also like make bone broth with them. You can so. eat them, your yeah. dog or you, or a cat. If you have a really, really aggressive cat, which we have a few of those, so. <laughs> yeah, uh, dry ice is amazing. And it's not, you know, it doesn't matter where it's shipping to. It's a uh, sublimation over time rather than temperature and uh, because science. And uh, yeah, it works great. We did have one order that took um, a week because of I was going to Nevada. I-80 and it must have got lost somewhere and I'm assuming it sat like on a truck somewhere where it was cold out because it was stuck in a blizzard on I-80 and uh it was 10 pounds of ground beef and it was like one package was thawed and one was like partially thawed and otherwise like it made it. Yeah amazing. So, St. Louis style is pork butt uh no. We shoulder have, we, we have, have shoulder, shoulder roast. Shoulder roast. Yeah we have shoulder roast but not steak. Isn't so. pork butt ham? No. No, they do a weird thing with pork. Like they call the shoulder butt. Yeah. That's it's a weird. part of the shoulder. But yeah, why? Yeah, okay, whatever. <laughs> it's a center cut from the pork shoulder, a great combo of meat and fat. Yeah, there we, we go. just get shoulder roast cut. We have a boneless shoulder roast or bone in shoulder roast, but I don't have steaks. Cut. So technically, you could order shoulder roast, thaw it, and make cut it, it into steaks, or leave it frozen actually, cut it into steaks, yeah. and then you could have whatever you wanted. Yep. What's the difference between a, a shoulder, I, we, I learned this, but what's the difference between a shoulder roast and a picnic roast? Boneless. Boneless. Pic that's just, boneless. that's the big difference is the yeah. bone. Okay. Yeah. Interesting. Uh, yeah. From Jared, I want a full accurate count of the cats. Uh, well, you can come and do that anytime you want, Jared. <laughs> yeah. There's, you can, you, actually, if you wait for a cold, this is how, it, this is what I figured out. You wait for a cold night. And you turn a heater on in the barn. We have some overhead infrared heaters. You turn one of those on, all the cats will gather into that one corral. <laughs> and and I think I made a short about it or I put it on something. Um, it may have been Facebook or Instagram, but like there's 30 cats in there having a meeting in a big not, cat pile. There's not 30 of them. There's a lot. I don't, so you can't count them even then because there's just a big <laughs> pile of cats. I could say that we have three cubic feet of cats. Sure. That's about all I can do. I, it's as close as I can get. I don't know what that would work out if you worked that out in math, but yeah. Uh, what is a T-bone that comes from a pig? Um, there's no T-bones from a pig. There's pork chops. Yeah. It's kind of the same. A, a pork but chop like, is kind really. of a T-bone. I mean, yeah. But kind of. There's bacon in there too, so there's. Yeah, it's a weird. Yeah, yeah it's a weird combination. Yeah. So yeah. They're not the same. Um, They're not the same animal, no. unfortunately. And yeah, it's the only thing we all have is tenderloins. Everybody's got those, even me. <laughs> I don't think you'd find the pork, the the T-bone on me. No, we're It'd be not. Be very lean. No, we don't have a. We don't carry our weight around our ribs. <laughs> like animals It'd be a do. very lean T-bone. <laughs> be chewing on that for a while. All right, so uh, we managed to kill twenty-five minutes here. Uh, if you do have questions, feel free to throw them up. If you would like to support the channel through Super Chatting, you can do that as well. Um, also, another thing that we just turned on on our channel, and somebody can tell me if they actually see this because I've never seen it. Um, 
is where you can do a super thanks on our videos now. YouTube uh, kind of didn't really push us, but they said, hey, this is a good thing to turn on. So we turned it on um, where people can thank you. Kind of like, a, I guess it's like a tip jar for videos. And I don't know if anybody has seen this. If you have seen it, please let me know because I don't know if it works or not because we have YouTube Premium, so we don't have to see well, this stuff. Well, you just have to log out. I just have to log out. <laughs> but uh, if you have seen it, let me know because I'm really interested to see if it's actually working. So um, <laughs> how's the water situation? Ground still frozen or is some of it finally making it into the aquifer? I think the ground is still pretty dang frozen. It's super frozen, but like water is, like water's going It's down. going through. I mean, you can water see. Water thaws ground. Right. And so like... It might not be penetrating all the way to the aquifers, which are... Two, three hundred feet. Yeah, like, but it's... And, and obviously, like, the frost doesn't go all the way... Was it I think our aquifers feet? are actually more filled from the mountain runoff somehow. I don't know how all that works. It's probably underground flowage and stuff. Like, our, 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 ground, our ground melt will go into the ground, but it's, I don't think it's going to make it 300 feet underground, will it? I have no idea. I don't know how that works. I'm not a, I'm not a hydro, hydronomist. Is that what that would be called? I'm not sure. But the ground is still frozen. Obviously, you guys saw the video where, you know, water was just running like mad. And I, I think I actually timed, when I went out and filmed that video, I timed it out just about right. Because about an hour after I filmed that video, the kids wanted to go out and see it. And I went out, and it was actually already starting to die down. Yeah. And you then probably you even should have gone out, like, so that night before... Carrie and I had to make a river in front of the high tunnel because the high tunnel was flooding. And then we went over, we like, like looked over at the chicken house and I was like, oh my God, the duck pond. Remember how bad oh, yeah, the, the duck, duck pond was pond? huge. Yeah. And that's already soaked in. Yeah. Much. And that's, that's gone down. And my high tunnel, like I still have standing water in front of the high tunnel, but it's not like it was um, in the TikTok that I made. It's not coming in the high tunnel anymore. And uh, like in between the high tunnels was just like completely flooded. That's all soaked in. So like the frost is coming out for sure, but it's freezing every night. So um it's probably just sitting in those top few inches of of soil and freezing and thawing but yeah like i went out that night like right about sunset well it was before that and like you could see like some of the roads where like the water had been running and it wasn't anymore and stuff so yeah you did great like timing wise yeah. I, I i about got it, it may right. have been more dramatic even like earlier in the day or something but like obviously Maybe. i also didn't want to go down so i'm weird about stuff like this but i didn't want to go down and look at it and then go okay now i gotta go back and get the gator and go film this. Like I really, I honestly well, how wanted. How are you to, gonna go down there? Why well, would I have to take the gator down? And then go back and get the gator. That's what you said. I'm sorry. I didn't. <laughs> I didn't want to take the gator down ahead of time, <laughs> scope it all out, uh. come back, get a camera, uh. get back in the gator, and then pretend to go and then go down and say, "Well, I already came down and looked at this. Now I'm gonna show you guys." I really did want to do like a whole like this is the first time that I've seen it too, and the excitement you could hear, you know, when I'm like, "Oh my gosh, the road's getting washed out, and this is crazy, and yeah. I'm not going any farther because I'm gonna get stuck." Yeah. Um, like that was true. That was very honest. Like I didn't, I didn't have any of that really planned out as we went down. I didn't know what it was gonna look like. In fact, where the waterfall was. Um, which I didn't even think of as a waterfall at the time. Lincoln started calling it a water. When we went down, he's like, there's a waterfall. Uh, but it's a, it's actually a, a, a reservoir, and there's a dike built there to keep the, keep the water, and there's really no spillway because the water has never really been that high. Um, or, yeah, I mean, very just rarely. Not, maybe it, like, tips over, like, a little bit. Yeah, but. well, now it's a mess. It's going to, it's, I remember when Gilbert was alive, and I, Vaguely remember it washing over one year, and we had to go out and fix it. We also had like muskrats one year that were digging oh, holes, and yeah, so was it was horrible. like, go get a burlap sack and shove it in the muskrat hole. Yeah. Like, oh my god, we're gonna die. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, I remember doing that. I actually, um, really, if you have, I don't know if this may be off base, but if you have dikes and you've got muskrats or gophers or anything like that, the, usually muskrats, they'll actually they'll go into water and they'll they'll drill they'll drill they'll dig a hole through the dike and then now your dike is leaking right um so gilbert would have us get burlap sacks and bentonite which is a, a rock that turns to slime and we'd stuff these holes full of this and put burlap sacks in and everything else and then one one time i was like i grabbed a, an old fence post and i just shoved it in the hole and hit it with a sledgehammer a few times and gilbert says well, I'll be damned. That were, I wish I would have known that 40 years ago. I said, well, yeah, you know, but enough water probably could push that. Eventually, but it's still there. There, <laughs> I, I, I look at it every once in a while, and there's still a fence post driven into the side of that dike. It was the same one that the, the water was coming over. So pretty cool stuff. Uh, Margaret Trace, thank you very much for the $20 super chat. Appreciate it. And JP Merrick asked, what happened to the rabbits? That was a $10 still super chat. Uh, we we have still one. have the one. The, the one, the second one, what was it? Nibbles and Twizzler. Mm. 
I don't know which one's left because I'd have to ask the kids, but died, just kind of up and. I think heat stroke. Heat stroke, something like sure. that. It was a hot day. <laughs> um, could you do irrigation? Unfortunately, no. Um, just not. It's, it's input cost way outweighs what we could actually and do. We don't want to dig reservoirs and stuff either. So those are all naturally forming and occurring reservoirs. And so over time, like sediment and topsoil and everything has um, settled in those reservoirs and plant matter and everything. We have super sandy soil. We have sandy loam, and so it doesn't hold water at all. It runs through really fast. Even like when we did our septic, you have to do a thing called a perk test, which is like how quickly the water goes down. It goes down faster than like they say it can go down because uh, we're like pure sand here. Yeah. Um, and so if we start messing with those reservoirs and we start digging up those reservoirs and we disturb that natural sediment and that compaction and stuff because water compacts over time, um, if we start messing with that, like we're going to screw up our reservoirs. So it's okay that the water doesn't stay here. It's fine. <laughs> um, we're just going to leave the naturally occurring reservoirs as they are yeah lots of suggestions from that video that you go out and you yeah. dig your reservoirs deeper but what you don't realize is when you dig them deeper you're removing all that hard packed soil in there and all that silt and that like everything that holds the water it's in. layers and layers of decay that happens at the bottom of a pond and stuff that holds that water in over time so um even when our reservoirs dry up like we worry that they're not going to hold and they probably don't hold as well like it takes some time for them to actually like hold like don't you agree mm -hmm. like yeah yeah you, like the years like the, that like the triangle pasture like we have had years where that hasn't dried up like if we gotten like some late rain like a hard fast thunderstorm um it will fill back up and then it'll stay full for most of the summer and it seems like it drains faster when it goes dry yeah it's like, it's yeah because the soil does change yeah and if we dug all that out of there now we're down to sand again and it could rain and it would be gone. So I mean, we'd almost take, have to it would like take years. Yeah, we'd almost have to do something uh, like put a liner in, or put bentonite in, or like we'd have to, or bring in clay or something. Like we would have to do something to make that reservoir hold water. So, mm -hmm. um, and like even if we, even if they were deeper, like we can't, we're not going to irrigate out of them. There's not enough water. Like yeah. it takes millions of gallons of water to irrigate. Um, so really quick, uh, if we. I think I mentioned in the last video, I did the math, the triangle pasture holds about 300,000 gallons of water, which is great. That triangle pasture pond, the one that's right out here that you can see on the, live, on the webcam. Um, in order to irrigate 50 acres, one inch of, uh, one inch of water is over a million gallons. Yeah, it's so millions we, of gallons. Could pump the, we could pump every pond on the ranch dry and irrigate for two weeks. Yeah. 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 Or, we, or we water the animals for an entire summer. So yeah. Yeah. we're dry land farmers. We don't need to change that. We can make, <laughs> we can do things to make like grass and stuff better. Like once we get out of this drought cycle and stuff and we get our infrastructure in place for the business model that we want to have, you know, for a direct consumer, we will probably start looking at pasture and hay fields stuff. Probably not this year. I wish we could this year, but I don't think it's in the cards. Well, we don't quite know that we're out of the drought yet either. Yeah. Um, Obviously, this all looks good, but this isn't going to grow hay. Um, this fills reservoirs. So w there's things we can do to make our land better, but, like, we're dry land farmers with 14 to 16 inches of precipitation, 2 inches of topsoil, and sandy loam. Yeah, 2 inches of topsoil. I think that's, like, generous. <laughs> it depends so, on how windy it is that it's, day. Like, it's okay that that's what we are. We don't need to be Iowa. Yeah, it's it's interesting. Like, um, there was a question earlier. Somebody asked about aerating hay fields. Like, I would love to aerate hay fields. I think it would be a great thing to be able to do. However, the equipment is not around here I don't at even all know that to we be would able to need do it. To do that, though, it would be interesting to try because, like, if you could if you could get this the water into the hay fields deeper into the soil, is that good or not? You know. So, like, pasture grass and stuff, like, it's just, and, like... And it is native grass. Yeah, it's yeah. native grasses and stuff, but, like, our, our hay fields are different than our pastures, right? Because, like, we do plant, um, like, the hay fields have been planted. Um, not, like, recently, but they have been. Um, and, like, grass, is, grass does what grass does. And, like, not say that we can't do it better, right? But, like... Yeah, you just kind of, like, you need to have different species of grass so that you have different root depths and and you have grasses that um, are, you know, spread, send out roots, like, 
this way, ones that have big tap roots, like it's kind of its own little ecosystem. And like, yes, we can do things better. I don't, I don't know though that you need to aerate it. I don't know, not I my area not of expertise. And, and really the only aerator you can get around here is the one you get at Menards that's four feet wide and it would take you Yeah, I mean, I've never seen anybody, obviously nobody here does anything, but. Um, <laughs> that's the part of the problem. <laughs> sounds like you should switch to rice patties. Well, today, <laughs> tomorrow, no. <laughs> Maybe tomorrow. Uh, <laughs> Uh, somebody mentioned that Jeff should go out in the water truck and water the hay fields. <laughs> yeah. Jeff and I sat down, and we should have made a video about it. We didn't. Uh, Jeff and I sat down one day over drinks, and we figured out that if he filled up the water truck, which I think is 1,500 gallons or something like that, and he went out and put it on the field, came back, filled it up again, went out and put it on the field, he would literally have to go 24 hours a day for like five days a week to be able to put an inch worth of water yeah, on a hay not, field. It was crazy. It yeah. was just like, oh my God, well, Jeff, get to it and, and start running fuel and no. the pump, everything else. Yeah, it's crazy. It's yeah, just and nuts. none of that. Like, you don't it, realize how much water it really takes. Right, and it, it costs money to pump water. Like, that's not free. Like, it, pumps are ridiculously expensive to move that much water. Irrigation's very, very expensive. Like, it's in, in electricity. Like, it's not like. D. Hansen Ranch has a good point. With sand, it's not necessary no. to aerate because you are getting penetration into the soil. That makes sense. Right. Perfect sense. Thank yeah, you. no, everything moves through it super quickly. It's also why, like, we could fertilize, like, and there's, we could do, like, a, a time release, like, fertilizer, like, um, a pellet that dissolves slowly over time. But, um, you know, it's like there's nothing to hold the moisture in and the nutrients. Mm -hmm. And, like, obviously we're still growing grass so like we don't need to go put a ton of moisture or a ton of nitrogen on our fields the years that we don't have hay and we don't have grass growth it's not because of nutrients not to say nutrients wouldn't help right nitrogen phosphorus potassium they would all help but at the end of the day you still have to have moisture none of those nutrients mean anything to plants if there's no water to deliver it to the roots um that's how nutrients go to plants is through water and then you also have to think too like there's tons of inputs that are happening in that grassland and in that pasture naturally uh cows <laughs> put nutrients back on antelope deer they put nutrients on um all there's tons of wildlife like we're not because we don't have monoculture of crops and stuff where we only attract certain native species like our hay fields and pastures are full of native species out there. There's tons of different birds. There's tons of different rodents. There's tons of different insects. Like they're all putting nutrients down. Rainfall puts nutrients down. So snow melt has nutrients. It's grasslands and hay fields and stuff like it, they're their own ecosystem to some extent. Yep. We just let them do what they do. <laughs> let them do what they do. Hefner Farms here. Uh, thanks for the shirt. Do appreciate it. I kind of feel like I should be wearing a smoking jacket when I'm wearing <laughs> just because it's Hefner Farm, you know, but it's okay. You didn't send a smoking jacket, just a shirt uh, or a robe or whatever Hugh Hefner wore. I don't know. Probably not related. Different spelling too, I think. Um, let's uh, really quickly, uh, lots of questions here about the, the gator. Uh, I can kind of give you guys a little bit of what's going on with it. Um, we are going to be getting a new gator. And uh, that's because John Deere did actually kind of step up and do the right thing. Like they, they paid for a majority of the new transmission. Um, actually, technically, they kind of paid for all of it because the, the they incentivized us to right so the deal was that the new new transmission cost eight thousand dollars insane uh so they paid for six thousand dollars of the new transmission we paid for two thousand we haven't paid that yet have we I haven't got a paid for two thousand dollars of the new transmission the new transmission's paid off then john deere it's came not, we don't have a bill we haven't got it yet but then john <laughs> deere said hey if you want a new gator we'll take that two thousand dollars and we'll just knock it off the price of a new gator yeah so that's what we've decided to do and um, they offered us a very nice price a trade-in for a trade-in yeah yeah yeah, yeah. Uh, even though i think they're going to probably smash our old gator but we have no idea we didn't no idea. ask somebody so. I'll, I'll put a secret mark on it if anybody ends up with it let me know um but yeah so we'll in some some point in, in april or may or some damn time we'll get a new gator um we're still running with the old one though and I did wash the windows, so. I, mean, I don't think it's right. You don't think it's right? No, you step on the gas. Oh, the gator's not that. right. I thought you. I, I, no, no, I thought no, you meant I, the deal wasn't no, right. No, I think the deal was as like it was the best that we could hope for. Like it, yeah, because what they originally offered for a trade versus like what like when it came down to like hey like 
we're I, I want that gator we want that gator gone like we decided that was the best we were gonna always try and figure out probably how to get out of that gator um it sucks because like it was almost paid off and now we have to start all over again <laughs> uh but uh that's fine they offered us compared to what they said originally like oh your gator's probably worth this on trade and compared to like what they did and then like taking care of the repair and the credit and stuff like it's like we're still financing more though than we had started because you know the price has gone up right uh so put an air tag on the old gator that's a good idea yeah but i don't think that, even with the new transmission and stuff i feel like that gator just doesn't there's something off with it like i said it was made on a great. monday or a friday yeah. somebody just didn't put we're gonna a drive the bit gator extra love we're gonna it. drive it until the new one gets here uh we it's we need it but i don't know i was just i like when i went out and checked water and stuff like i just feel like my foot's on the floor and it's like go <laughs> like just doesn't it just doesn't go don't you think that gators don't no nope, the old one did they don't fly. i mean the the old gator i think would top out at like does anybody but have a gator i, feel I think like it tops out at like really, 40 miles an hour i feel like this one the accelerator is very sluggish to yeah. respond yeah it does take a little bit to get it going but i don't like it either way Time we're to in fact what's funny is i actually got an email from a from a family today that said hey i know you've been having trouble with your gator we're thinking about getting one can we get your honest opinion and on, I, I had to honestly say, like, the gator that I have, I'm pretty sure something screwed up with it. Like, and it probably has been since the moment we got it. But the nice thing is that John Deere did step up and say, hey, something's wrong with this gator. What can we do? And our, and our local dealer, obviously, and their service department um, stood, stood, by, stood by us and said, hey, what can we do for these guys to keep them in gators? Yeah. And, and, and how can we make this work? And the first gator, Gilbert's gator, was a great machine. And even like Gilbert's two-wheel drive gator, great machine. My gator that my nonprofit bought, not the same type of gator, but I mean, it's still a gator. It is a great, like I love, I love my gators yeah. that I use for the gardens all the time. Um, and I don't, like it's not the max speed and like we don't need a razor because I don't think it would hold up to a cow. <laughs> Maybe. Maybe it would. I don't know. But we... Uh, I looked at razors. They're too damn nice. Yeah, and, like, we need cargo space, and, like, it's just different. Just a different type of machine. Um, it's what my... What I don't like about the Gator and this one, and what I've always thought was weird and stuff, and it's I think it's gotten worse, is, like, it's just as sluggish to respond. Mm -hmm. And yeah. it feels like it's, I know it's belt driven, but like it feels like And we like replaced it, the belt three times. It feels know. like it slips. Like you can feel it in your foot. Acceleration rules may have a point. I am tough on equipment, apparently. I don't know. It's less than two years old, though. No. And, and you look at like the old Gator, the 825i that we had, you know, that thing had 14,000 miles on it. And then we yeah. put a new engine in it and still ran the damn thing. Yeah. So. I think we just got a bad one. Possibly. Yeah, and it happens. I think that you know it doesn't. It doesn't matter what it is. You get something. There's going to be, you know, there's there's a failure rate on everything, right? So if you get a thousand transmissions delivered to the factory, one of them is going to be bad. So yeah, and I think obviously like we're signing up and committing to another Gator, and obviously if this other one doesn't work, like you know we won't. I don't. We won't buy a third one. Probably so. not. It's like a golf cart. We actually talked about, we would love to have a golf cart. The if expensive. anybody has an old golf cart that they want to get rid of, let us know. Because actually, the reason, we, the reason we want a golf cart, number one, I want to see Jeff driving around on a golf cart. But we have the RV park, and we have the Airbnb and all the other things that we do. And, like, people crossing the highway, walking across the highway, um, is a little spooky sometimes. It's more spooky than people parking. <laughs> True. <laughs> the people that have ginormous rvs that just you know like bought it off the lot and then like threw their toe behind it and we're like okay we're road tripping <laughs> <laughs> no idea how to drive this thing but yeah the people that make u-turns on the highway <laughs> we've had people miss the miss the driveway and stop and make a u-turn in a 60 foot rv and like an eight point turn in the middle of the highway yeah and then here comes a semi up over the hill and he's laying on his horn oh my gosh anyway um the thought is, before somebody gets hurt walking across the highway to come over to the farm store, um, that we, if we had a golf cart, first we could let, you know, we could have Jeff go over and pick people up, bring them to the farm yeah, store, you know, all that kind of stuff. So, 
that kind of thing. Jared had a super chat. Oh, did he? I missed it. If I send you a gun legally, will you mount it on the gear? Like a turret? That would be interesting. Pop out of the top. I don't know. I don't really see the point, but okay. Well, you have to ask him what kind of gun. <laughs> Do you have a picture of the new Gator? Yeah, it looks like the old one. It looks exactly like they the old one. They haven't changed the body style. No, right? but they did. I did. I was reading about some of the, because, you know, it's two years newer. Yeah. So it'll have, they, they, that's the interesting thing. They, they're constantly, you know, yeah, they evolving them. things and changing things and new fuel pumps or new suspension or whatever else it might be. So, yeah, there's, there's some new things going new on. New transmission. There. Could be. I don't know. <laughs> um, let's see. You know, our four-wheelers have run great for years. Yeah. You know, what's funny is uh, uh, a guy that, that works or, at a Honda dealership got a hold of me when all this stuff was happening with the Gator. And uh, he said, uh, he said, you guys have some sort of deal with John Deere or what? And I said, no, I don't. We don't have any deal with John Deere. We don't have any sponsorship, nothing with John Deere. And he said, well... I find it weird that you call the Gator the Gator, but when you're on the four wheelers, you call them the four wheelers, not the Hondas. And I said, well, that's just, you know, the wording that we use, but like. Yeah, we also call it the heifer pasture and we don't ever put heifers in it. So, I mean. <laughs> the Aeroquip, we call the Aeroquip, even though Aeroquip hates the fact that we call it the Aeroquip. So, they probably like it now, but I, I, I got phone calls from Aeroquip saying, hey, stop calling it the Aeroquip. It's like, that's what we call it. Like, can't you just call it the Corrals? No, because it's the Aeroquip. That's what we call and it. And an underground cattle crossing would be helpful. Hopefully the next time they tear up the highway. We'll we can have, ask for a tunnel. We'll have some YouTube money that can pay for that. They should pay for that. The Durham Ranch has them. They do. They have a tunnel. They have money, though. <laughs> Everybody super chat $5 so we can get a tunnel. <laughs> a tunnel. Let's, let's get a tunnel fund going. Uh, paintball gun. Oh, that would be kind of cool. <laughs> Dan, we'll see you later. Thank you very have much. A have a great night. week. Um, ask him what day of the week the Gator was built. Probably a good idea. <laughs> uh, I have uh, a gas golf cart that has a little flatbed. I love it. Hauls my garden stuff and mulch, etc. Just when I wish it went a little faster. Buy a two-wheel drive Gator. Why are golf carts so I expensive? <laughs> like we have been looking at golf carts for that exact same reason. And we actually looked at a bus at one point too. We're like, we need a little short bus, and we can pick people up at the RV park, bring them over to the to the Airbnb or to the to the farm store or for the tour, because that's the other thing we do is a tour, so we can bring them over for the tour. Um, but uh, yeah, they're so expensive. Golf carts are. Don't you know, know I think as much as uh, as much as there are a few instances where um, obviously people have some physical limitations, and it'd be nice to be able to transport them back and forth and stuff, but. Uh, Poor Jeff would never get a break. Man, he probably people wouldn't. would be like, get there's, services. <laughs> there's Jeff's pager number. Just let him know if you need a ride somewhere. We're not going to secretly dig our own tunnel. We're, none of us are engineers. <laughs> yes, I've started the garden. Uh, high tunnel is going. What all is planted in there? Um, well, some turnips are up and some radishes. And then saw some spinach today. And kale, rainbow chard, collards. I need to put in cabbage and lettuce and stuff. That's the plan for tomorrow. Cool. Yeah. So it's like <laughs> half planted. Uh, the kids do drive the, the gators. They they try to. Grace can't really reach the pedals very well. Kenzie will drive it if you make her. She's just weird about driving yet. Um, Henry, tours start. Uh, what, what comes first, Labor Day or Memorial Day? I always get that I don't confused. Know. We've been trying to teach you this. I, I always forget. Here's a learning moment. Make a guess. You'll, you'll Memorial Day is in May because they both start with M. <laughs> so we start. Good job. Uh, Memorial Day we start. Well, we have harvest toast before then. Are you going to start it before then? Yeah, maybe. We'll see. We do have harvest toast starting in April, which is crazy. I know. Guest services better get back. Jared is my code name. Said, what's, I can't read it super chat. Sorry. Uh, have the muskrats take a tunnel under the highway. There is a pond over there right now, so maybe. Yeah, maybe they can get them working. <laughs> Uh, from Prepper 101, who's been our comedy relief for the evening. Uh, my wife and I are looking to buy a calf for our homestead. Would you sell us one? First, you should buy two. And second of all, no. <laughs> because we don't have enough. <laughs> yeah. Technically, like, we're, we're, we're kind of trying to keep everything we're, on the ranch right now. We're trying to build up our numbers so that we don't have to buy from somebody else. Eventually, so. there is a point someday, somewhere down the road, where you could possibly be able to buy our Wyoming Life bread heifers or just unbred heifers like in five years yeah check back right now everything <laughs> honestly it's nothing against you it's just it's not because you're funny either uh funny looking 
but we're just trying to keep everything on the ranch that we can right now. We've had lots of offers, people trying yeah. to buy stuff. And it's like, well, we could just sell it all and be done. <laughs> just be but like, like, we don't have the numbers that we need to maintain what we're trying to do here, so. Yeah. It's, uh, it's definitely. Do you have Hustler equipment you need to demo still? Yes. Yeah, uh, yeah I've still got, um, oh, somebody's made an order. Uh, I have to, I have a lot of bale handling equipment, which I'm probably gonna probably, they want me to showcase it during haying because we're gonna be moving a lot of bales around. Well, you have to uh, have bales now. Well, yeah, but I just have to take them off to put in the back of the hustler, so I guess I could do that. Um, we've got you can uh, manure spreaders and what else do we got? Uh, I've got a bale slicer still to, to try out. They wanna, they wanna see if that's gonna work, so. Yeah, you should do some of that. I should do some of that. Thank you, Margaret, for coming. Appreciate Thank it. You. Ciao. Boy, everybody has a lot of faith in what Jeff can do. Somebody Jeff can't build a tunnel. Somebody earlier said that <laughs> Jeff should build an aerator because if anybody knows how, Jeff knows how to build an aerator. <laughs> and now we got people trying to convince Jeff that he knows how to build a tunnel. We do not want the highway to collapse. Carrie can build a tunnel. Are you sure? Yeah. Okay. Carrie, I don't like, think anybody should be remember, building a tunnel underneath a state Carrie highway. Remember Carrie worked for YDOT for like a few years? I, yeah, okay, cool. But like still, they would I'm notice. only about like 97% sure that she could do it. She probably needs to like, you know, consult with some other people. Yeah, exactly. Would you give her a shovel and be like, <laughs> hey, go start digging us a tunnel. <laughs> don't encourage Jeff. We'll wake up one morning and be out there with a shovel. <laughs> Just a really big culvert. Uh, let's see. We bought a long it's really supposed a nice to have a walk. A it's a nice flat walk too across the highway. Like you just gotta. You gotta move. There's good visibility from one side, not the other. Jeff will be the labor. Jeff's gonna die if he has to build a tunnel under the highway. <laughs> we need the uh, the tunnel that they you know that they went underneath the English ch uh, Channel with, and just you know one of those. We could use the skid steer. I think somebody would have a problem with us digging a tunnel underneath and the highway. And I think Jared's suggestion also. <laughs> Did you see that? No, I missed it. Where it's is right it? at the bottom. <laughs> if you had a gun mounted on the gator, you could just stop traffic when you need to. <laughs> there was a, uh, this morning when I'm I was, not bailing you out. <laughs> when I was when I was out feeding this morning, there was a sheriff's deputy that was parked right at our approach, and uh, you know I crossed the road 18 times in the morning, so I'm going over and I'm putting feed in with the, each one of the groups of steers, and I have to feed the the C team, and I've got to check waters and all that other stuff. So the first time I went out, and he was running radar, and he was sitting in our approach. So the first time he saw me coming, and he, you know, moved out of the way, and he went down to the next approach and oh, sat down he there. Sit there. And so he was sitting there for quite a while, and I and I just kept on going back and back and back and forth across the road. But um, it, it there there is a lot of traffic, right? So like you know. Well, not today. It's Sunday. There was there was quite a bit. There was some so. Yeah, lots and lots of get, get crossing guard sign. <laughs> Can we get them to do the outfit too? That would be kind of funny. You know, one time the horses got out, like the horses have only gotten out like once or twice in all the years that we've had them. But uh, so we have really good visibility going south, right? Like huge long, what, that you can see people coming down the hill and stuff and they can see us. And uh, so the horses were in the ditch and we were trying to not kick them back across the road because we're like, well, we'll just get them we ended up walking him up to the hay yard and but we were gonna try and open another gate and stuff but like anyhow horses in the ditch no halters on them there's you me and jeff walking in the ditch and i'm like standing on the road like slow down yeah because <laughs> horses, horses like, get spooked. they like wait till they're like right on top of us to slow down i was like can you you can see me for half a mile like slow down mm. people and people do that though. We like the, like the people trying to turn around their RV in front of the house on the highway. And you'll see a semi coming down the hill at 70 miles an hour and he waits until he's 15 feet from him and going, oh, I should probably slow down now. Yeah, but if you can see him at the top of the hill, like you got plenty of time. Yeah. It's, it's this hill this way that yeah. sneaks up on you. It's a little tricky. It's not horrible. You just can't lollygag across the road. <laughs> Grace had a great idea. She thought a zip line would be an Perfect. awesome idea. They just have it needs to be, to be adjustable. Yeah, so you can go both ways. Yeah. So we could do like a tractor on each end and oh, just like, you know, attach gonna, the zip line to the bucket. What I'm saying is like a hydraulic pole. Well, okay, either way. You press the button. Like we have cross, tractors. Like we don't a, have a hydraulic pole. Well, if we're going to have a... The, 
Who's going to operate two tractors? I don't know. We'll just have to set it all up. I feel like a hydraulic pole with like a crossing guard like button. <laughs> <laughs> then you have to climb up and then zip line down. It's Seems easier better. just to walk across the highway. But somebody is going to go too slow someday and cause a problem. Well, they better walk faster. <laughs> Move faster. Speed limit is 70. There's no HOA. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 70 miles an hour is quick. It goes by fast. Aaron, do you ever need to use pesticides in your garden? Yeah. Lots of pesticides? Not very no. often. We don't have a lot of bugs here, but if you don't have bugs, you're not you're doing something wrong. It's just, they're just <laughs> if you don't have bugs? Yeah, they're just part, like, it's an ecosystem. Like, they're part of the ecosystem. Like, you're not going to keep them out. It's right. all just about, like, managing it, but... Yeah, bugs are okay. You just got to deal with them. Yeah. Uh, Lincoln was looking for spiders today. I said, I don't, I don't think there's any spiders out. There was a couple of rabbits in the garden. They're in the high garden, tunnel. Though. There's rabbits in the garden? Oh, mm -hmm. now it's going to need to be remedied. Yep. Uh, <laughs> uh, there's cutworms in the high tunnel right now and uh, some grasshoppers, and there's spiders. There's grasshoppers in the tunnel? Yeah, there's a couple. Really? Interesting. They made it through the winter. <laughs> uh so yeah, it's just about, like, flea beetles are our biggest challenge. Yeah. But. Interesting. All right, uh, 30 and 30, coming up in 10 days, we start the 30 and 30. That's one video per day for 30 days straight, followed up by a 24-hour live stream. Um, we are going to have 30, special 30 and 30 merch, including a very a special uh, Cracker Jack t-shirt and the artwork. Don't, it, like, don't make promises. Okay, well, maybe a Cracker Jack t-shirt uh, that was actually designed by uh, Susan, who is Gary, our neighbor. Everybody needs a Gary. Uh, his wife designed uh, a t-shirt for us. So Again, um, not done yet. Not done yet. Don't make promises. Working on it. So <laughs> <laughs> we'll figure that out. Uh, that is happening here in just 10 days. Uh, it's a very busy time on the ranch. Calving is getting going, so we've got that happening. Uh, we have not had any heifer calves yet, but I'm sure that there's some out there that are probably uh, just thinking about it probably any time now. They're, we're just waiting for one of those guys to, to have should, a calf. Maybe you should feel their udder. They, they don't, they're not that friendly. Not like Ethel. No. No, there was one. Uh, Kenzie and I went out to check heifers the other day, and I snuck up behind one, and I grabbed her tail and lifted it up just to kind of see what was going on. Like he didn't get and uh, she didn't seem to mind very much. And I was like, huh, that's weird. I don't know if she just didn't realize it was me or what was happening, mm -hmm. but she was uh, she was totally fine with it. So if you do have a bet in, I shouldn't say bet. No, legally, we're we not can't gambling. Say bet, we're not gambling. If you have a guess in uh, for your favorite heifer, uh, we will get, we will let you guys know um, when we do have one. And it's pro like I said, not that not that far uh, away. So, uh, what else do you got coming up? Well, JP Merrick had a super chat. That oh. you should answer. Uh, how did thirty at thirty come into being? Uh, you have explained it, but I forgot. Thirty and thirty started during COVID. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, it was kind of one of those things. Uh, I had a friend of mine at that time, and I and I it just kind of came up, and I was like, "What do What do you guys think about doing thirty videos in thirty days?" And well, pretty and much was, everybody thought we were crazy. Like everyone was locked down, so like so it's spring break week for us right now for the kids. Like they start their spring break tomorrow, and like so we the kids went on spring break, and then like we knew they weren't coming back. Like midway through, they're like, "Oh yeah, no, it's canceled. The rest of school's done." Uh, but. We, we started it in March. Like, one year it was, like, just the month of April. Like we always changed the The first dates. year we started March because it started right around spring right, break. Probably about this, like, the end of this week or something. Like, right. it started, like, very end of March and stuff. But it was, like, everybody was locked in their houses. The world was ending. The sky was falling. And it was, like, what we felt like we could contribute to, like, help make, like, things better for people. So, yeah, yeah it totally came out of COVID. Yeah, exactly. And the 24-hour live stream uh, just kind of seemed like a, a natural end it's to it it's not a natural end well it. it was just kind of like let's do something <laughs> we got to do something big right you do you do 30 videos in 30 days which is for me it's 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 a it's a huge accomplishment um and then at the end yeah 24 hours straight uh like like prepper said a day in the life um that's actually coming up at the end of the live stream it's on a weekend so people can hang out with us um it's amazing how many uh at, you know at four o'clock in the morning when I'm trying to stay awake and working on projects and just doing whatever I can. And, you know, there's there's 800 people that are very talkative and, and chit-chatting at, at 
you know, four o'clock in the morning about yeah. what's going on and, and what are we working on. So it's kind of cool to do, and, and you really do find out who the diehards are at that point, um, <laughs> or the people that can't sleep, one or the other. Well, if people would take the day off of work. And oh, like, yeah, I get all crazy. kinds of crazy stuff. Yeah, I took the day off of work. I actually have vacation days uh, planned yeah. around the 30 and 30 or whatever else. So uh, it's cool because it is something that I think is pretty uh, unique. To us, yeah. and, and I mean, there are a few other channels that do obviously daily vlogs and you yeah. know all that. Daily kind of stuff. vlogging is not. It's not like we invented that. No, it's not like we invented it. Um, but you know, during calving and being able to do stuff um, that, uh, uh, and and really, the big thing is kind of being able to let people see the day to day. Like yeah. during a regular video, three, two, three, one time a week, whatever, however often I put out videos, like you're seeing what I'm kind of like picking and choosing what you see, right? Um, you During still the do 30 and 30, the, I still do that. Yeah, I'm obviously it's not 24 hours every single no, day. No, but you're still seeing, you're seeing more than you would normally see. Yeah, yeah I course. have to go out. I'm, I'm going to town today. We're going to film that because I have to go to town and I have to do this. You know, so um, it's just kind of how it works out. The 24-hour live stream, we do build projects in because obviously, you know, we can't, uh, next eight hours of the 24 hour live stream is going to be me sleeping. No, yeah. we can't do that. Yeah, we have plans. Yeah. Uh, and like we have, we always have like projects and like, oh, we kind of even have a schedule loosely. We do. Um, so that we kind of, yeah, so we don't get like, so you don't get like uh, lost, like, uh, I don't know what to do. Yeah, yeah, we kind of, we have we have dinner scheduled. We've got, you know, fun things that we do where, you know, I'll bring Jeff in or Carrie or Aaron and I will sit down for a little while, talk about what's going on. Um, we kind of, you know, was the year before last, we, we stumbled into drinks with Aaron. Um, yeah. While I'm working on a project, on Aaron, Aaron's <laughs> narrating a project and, and drinking White Claws and, you know, that kind of fun stuff uh, seems to become tradition. So it's a lot of fun. It's a, it's, it's a great time and I'm, I'm really looking forward to it starting the 30 and 30 and uh, and being able to just kind of bring you guys along to, to, with what we do uh, day to day. We had a super chat before everyone leaves. Uh, let's see. Any future water infrastructure upgrades coming up? Not really. Um. I, we'd put some hydrants and some stock tanks maybe in some different places because we are finding that we have different like winter pasture needs and stuff but and we're going to maybe have to do something different for cow water next winter because of a pasture improvement fence line but no nothing like no irrigation no <laughs> nothing, nothing too crazy yeah we could just i think just, you never can have enough hydrants no, yeah, you could put a hydrant every 10 feet and yeah. you'd still use them all. It's crazy. So just some hydrant, like the the backgrounders, like they need a hydrant and like my garden needs some water work and stuff, but like nothing, I mean, yeah, I'm running garden hose for like across the road and stuff, but like, yeah, that can work. So, so it's just like little stuff. Yeah, so. and it, on, it really it does come down to finances too and being able to afford to do infrastructure upgrades and all that kind of yeah, stuff Yeah, it's just like we just have to prioritize right now like what the infrastructure, like we'd love to do all the things, you know, at once and stuff, but obviously like we're not made of money. So it's, um, you know, we're building a business like from the ground up and stuff. And like obviously like we have tractors and we have land and water and all that stuff is already here, but like now it's like being used in a completely different way. So... A lot of things just have to change and evolve and like we don't even know all the things right like we didn't know that we needed a stock tank for the backgrounders because we weren't planning to do that until it was a month ago when the ground's frozen yeah so yeah yeah so our needs are just changing so that's it's also like i'm super hesitant to go in and put in like a ton of infrastructure because like i don't know it seems like we're doing stuff different all the time yeah there's some equipment change. that we need too to make our lives a lot easier rather than like we can kind of get by on infrastructure if that makes sense yep so exactly all righty guys we're going to wrap things up uh, for this evening we really do appreciate it thanks for joining us at our new time of course daylight savings time uh, kind of throws a wrench in things around here it's light later on the ranch which means that our work day goes later uh, so live streams from here on out will be at 7 p.m. Uh, whether it's uh, the regular live stream that we do the first and third Sunday of uh, each month or the special 24 hour or 24 hour the special Patreon live stream. Yeah, and there probably will not be two live streams in during the 30 and 30. No, There'll I think we do one, one to start us this first week and then we do a uh, Patreon exclusive 
uh, rap party after the 24 hour live stream, which is a lot of fun. If you're not a Patreon, yeah. join Patreon just for yeah, that, it'll be that a couple month. Days just, after. To, just yeah, just to hang out for that because that's a uh, a lot of fun. We get everybody together and and we hang out and uh, talk about the 24 hour live stream and and all the stuff that you know how horrible it is. So <laughs> so it's a lot of fun. Live April schedule was, was will a blast. just be different. Obviously, everything's different in April, so live stream schedule will be different. Too. It will be. It so. will be. Make sure you sign up for the newsletter uh, so you can get the updates on what's coming up and how things are going to play out for the month of April. But the 30 and 30, 10 days away. Can't wait to bring you guys along uh, daily right here on the ranch. Until then, well, actually, until our next video comes out, which will probably be on Tuesday, uh, we hope that you guys uh, enjoy the rest of your weekend, hang out with your family, and uh, get back to work on Monday. So, Spring break tomorrow. Oh, yeah, spring break. Kids are home for a week, so that'll be fun. So you'll probably see them in some videos this week. So. Grace and Lincoln built a whole river system. They did. They, been... they have a whole. They have irrigation going on. I don't know why we can't di divert that to the. To They're the diverting it to the duck pond. <laughs> they are. Thank you guys. We appreciate it, and we'll see you next time. Thank you.